right now. Pittsburgh's best sports show is about to begin. Call us or tweet us. We've got things to talk about on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Good evening, everyone. Welcome inside the Fan Cave. This is where we talk sports every single night of the week. It's 412-575-2600. That's the number of the Bordis and Bordis hotline. We have a lot to get into. Chris Muller of the PM team is here. Actually, not here. He's there, which is 93.7 The Fan. As we talk a lot of things concerning football and basketball to start. And I want to start with football. You know, the Steelers have been chasing Chris, this inside linebacker, ever since Ryan Shazier got injured. And they're trying another guy here now in Cole Holcomb, who uh, was with Washington. He wore the green dot. He was uh, certainly a very sure-handed tackler. Not sure what his coverage skills are like. Uh, your thoughts about this move, and do they still need help in that position? Uh, I think they're going to look at it like they still need help at that position, yes. So I am still a little leery of where they might go in the draft and when that might happen in the draft. I hope it's not too high because uh, I think they've allocated way too much draft capital to that position when it's relative impact compared to, say, shutdown corner or elite edge rusher or elite defensive tackle or elite safety is, I think, minimal. Uh, this Cole Holcomb, though, looks like, I don't know, a guy who can do all the things Robert Spillane was asked to do except do them better because uh, Robert Spillane was asked to do things that he, frankly, wasn't capable of doing. Uh, if you're going to you know, address that position, I'd rather it be in free agency for a middling price or for not a break-the-bank price. And as for his coverage numbers, Bob, I can tell you, when he was targeted last year, I believe he gave up a 100 passer rating against. Not great. Mm. Or I, it might <laughs> even be in his career, actually, Bob. I think it's his career. He's given up a whole lot, and he's given up about 100 passer rating against. So, you know, unless you have a Levante David in his prime or a Fred Warner, chances are you're not going to find somebody at that position who can really lock down tight ends and backs and the occasional slot receiver, which is why it's frustrating to me that the Steelers are so hell-bent on trying to find that guy. It's just not very easy to. <laughs> it isn't. They've tried. I mean, John Bostick has come and gone. I remember Avery Williamson. Uh, who else? Mark Barron. They've, they've gone through so many people trying to figure out who they can bring in. Devin Bush, of course. They moved up 10 spots, and that's a bust, and, and, and so they continue to try. Although this is why I would like to see them sign Terrell Edmonds coming back because I think he's a guy who can do that. He can get in that box and help out. He can also with DeMonte KZ now here, make things, you know, versatile in that secondary. What do you think about KZ and Ogunjobi, those two? That happened yesterday, uh, but Ogunjobi was a lot of money. I thought KZ was a slam dunk move to bring back. I'm glad they did. I'm glad they uh, weren't put off by the fact that they brought him in and then he got hurt and missed a good chunk of the year. I think in, in past years, you know, that lack of availability is something that sours Mike Tomlin on players that he might bring in on short-term contracts. You know, somewhat understandably, coach wants player available, but I think maybe it unfairly soured him on guys where he would just say, ah, you know, you've had your time here, that's enough. Ogan Joby surprised me a little bit because they gave him a pretty good chunk of change, as you said, Bob, and he barely practiced all year last year. Now, they ha I would have to think, my big takeaway from that is they have to have some assurances on the medicals that Ogan Joby, an extra year removed from surgery and from all his foot and, you know, lower body issues – is going to be a much healthier player who's able to practice, able to play more snaps, et cetera. I like Ogan Joby a lot if he's healthy, if he's playing a majority of the snaps. If you've got to worry about his health, it's a much different story. Real quick before we get a break, when I asked you about Pitt last night, that was, uh, I thought, a very sloppy mm -hmm. game at times. I mean, it went right down to the wire. Uh, there was a lot of bad shooting in that uh, game. There were a lot of out-rebounding numbers Pitt didn't win a lot of categories, but they end up getting a win because of Jamarius Burt with a key shot. They clamped down in the middle, although I was surprised that Mississippi State, Chris, at the last second there, they had 2.7 seconds. They rushed a three. The guy could have driven in and maybe gotten fouled or, or got a much higher percentage shot, and they almost got the tip in, but still a good win for the Panthers who now move on. Your thoughts about that and Iowa State? Uh, well, I think at the end, they got the shot they wanted. You know, it was an open three. I mean, I think most college players would say, I'm not going to dribble in and, and try to take, like, sort of a semi-floater runner, uh, even though it's a closer shot. A foul, I don't know. That, the way that game was officiated, who knows? <laughs> I actually thought Tolu Smith made the worst play there. Uh, Nike Sabandi let him go right by him, no box out, and he rushed that putback. He almost, like, slammed it like he was whipping a volleyball or something when he probably could have dunked it or gently laid it in. 
Uh, so they dodged two there uh, that easily either one of them could have gone in. Uh, as far as, and as far as that game itself, very quickly, it was sloppy, but man, was it fun to have the old pulse pounding again <laughs> watching a tournament game. I mean, I just had a blast watching it as a pure fan of sports. I know you love basketball. There was a ton of drama, more lead changes in an NCAA tournament game than we've seen since 2018. As for Iowa State, real quick, they're like Mississippi State, except a little better across the board, and they did it in a better conference. I don't like what that foreshadows for Pitt. Yeah, they didn't finish too strong, though, so hopefully that'll be something that carries over and it helps Pitt. We'll see how it goes. And Federico, Federico, they need to get him in there, too. Maybe an extra day will help. We're going to take a break here, Chris. we got open lines, 412-575-2600. We'll also talk about the Penguins' struggles and what do they do in goal with two big games coming up against the Rangers. It's all next. We're right here live on Pittsburgh CW and 93.7 The Fan on the Simulcast.